Hi everybody and welcome to a new series of lessons with me, Dr. Chris. And as you can see, uh, it's Christmas. Well, at least it is for the next four lessons. I've decided that uh, for our new series, we're going to start off with something a bit festive because Christmas is an ideal time to share music with friends and family. We've got some great things planned for this series of lessons. And to begin with, I thought we'd use a few festive tunes to ignite your piano playing. So if you're thinking whether or not this series of lessons is for you, uh, don't worry. Uh, we're going to start from the very basics. If you've watched our first series, that's brilliant. Uh, but if you haven't, or maybe you've only just watched a few, then you'll find that we actually pick up from a fairly basic level. So hopefully there's something in these for everybody. So where do we begin? Well, if you've seen the last set of lessons, you'll know that we often start to learn pieces just by uh, copying patterns on the piano. Let me show you what I'm going to get you to start to play today. It's Jingle Bells, a firm favourite, of course, with everybody. Um, and over the next two lessons, I'm going to show you how it's possible to play something like this. So there we go. In actual fact, it sounds really great, even from a, a basic arrangement like that. And yes, we will be doing both hands as well. So where do we begin? Well, of course, I guess the most important part of any music is the melody. So we're going to try that first. Now, even if you're only just starting out on your keyboard or your piano playing, hopefully you'll be able to follow what's coming next, because we're going to learn this in a very hands on practical way. What I want you to do first, after you've switched on your piano or your keyboard, of course, uh, is to find middle C. Now, you probably know where middle C is, but in case you need a bit of uh, guidance along the way, the way we find middle C, well, first of all, uh, look for two black notes roughly in the middle. So here's my piano roughly in the middle and middle C uh, is somewhere here. Two black keys and then to the left, of the two black keys is going to be a C. So let's let's first of all try and play that note on your piano or your keyboard, okay? Join in when you think you've got it. So yep, two black keys and to the left of two black keys is the C. Now once you've got that note there, what we need to do then is with our right hand here, we're going to put our fingers on next door neighbor notes. OK, and look at how I'm playing these keys. The important thing here is that you're actually going to use your fingertips. OK, so the, placing the, the fingertips very relaxed uh, on the keys. Here we are. And notice how my thumb is playing on the side. That's you know, a really nice playing hand shape if you can do that. There's our middle C. And what I'd like you to do is a little exercise. We're going to do one, two, three, four, five. Just like that. Here it is again. Watch. One, two, three, four, five. Notice how I've numbered my fingers. The thumb is one, and we count all the way up to our little finger, which is finger five. OK. Can you play that for me, please? Here we go. OK, so one, two, three, four, five. Good. Do it one more time. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Great. OK, now here's a couple of notes for you to find. Can you find me finger one? There we go. Can you find me and play finger five? And can you find and play finger three, please? Yep, the one in the middle. There it is, finger three. Now, it's actually finger three that we're going to need to use to start to play jingle bells. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up 
the melody and play it to you in little short phrases. And the idea is that you practice the phrases with me and then we're going to play it back together. So the first phrase we need does this. Three, 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 three. OK, watch again. I might slow it down, actually. Here we go. Three, 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 three. OK, can you try that for me? Here we go. Ready? One, two, ready, play. Three, 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 three. Great. OK, here's the next phrase. OK, it's going to go three, five, one, two, three. OK, watch again. Here we go. Finger three, three. Five, one, two, three. Okay, do you want to practice that a couple of times? Let's try this. Ready with me? Your turn. Ready, go. Three, five, one, two, three. Great. Try again. Ready, play. Three, five, one, two, three. OK, now I'm going to join those two phrases together and we're going to end up with this. Here we go. Three, 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 five, one, two, three. OK, I'll play that for you one more time. This time, I'm just going to play the notes. You won't hear any finger numbers. OK, now it's your turn. Let's join those two phrases together and play from the beginning. I'm going to say the finger numbers, OK? We'll do it a couple of times, nice and slow. Your go, ready, play. Three, three, three. Three, three, three. Three, five, one, two, three. Great. One last time. Ready, play. Three, 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 five, one, two, three. OK, good. Let's do it again. This time I'm not going to uh, say any finger numbers. OK, let's just concentrate on the uh, pitches of the note. OK, the, the different notes to play. Here we go. Ready? We're going to start on finger three. OK. One, two, ready, go. OK, so how did you get on? Well, so far, it's going pretty well, isn't it? Um, you know, you can you know, copy a phrase by finger number and put it together, which is great. However, what's coming up next? could be a little bit more complicated. For our next phrase, we're going to start off on finger four. And watch this. It's going to go four, 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 three, 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 three. Four, 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 three, 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 three. Okay, let's slow that down. Okay. Now if you find this a bit complicated, don't worry. I've got an idea. All right. But let's just try it and see what happens. OK. Finger four, a little bit slower. This phrase. Four, 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 three, 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 three. OK. Ready to play with me? Your go. Ready. Play. Four, 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 three, three. Three, three. OK, and here's the last phrase. OK, we're going back to finger three and we're going to play this together.
Okay, and that was three, two, two, three, two, five. Should we try that? Let's do it a couple of times. All right, finger three. Ready? Ready? Play. Three, two, two, three, two, five. And one last go. One, two, ready, go. Three, two, two, three, two, five. Okay, really well done. And of course, some of that was fairly straightforward. The middle bit wasn't quite so easy, was it? And that's the issue with what we call rote learning. It's great when someone shows you actually how the notes are pressed on the piano and you can get a, a sense of the, the rhythm of the notes and, and how it should go by just watching and listening. And in my case, telling you what fingers to play. But of course, that's not how music works. And one of the aims of these next four lessons is to build your confidence in reading music, because if you can read music, it opens up so many doors. And when you're reading music, actually what you're processing is two different things. You're first of all thinking about how long a note lasts for, because thinking back to Jingle Bells, we had some short notes and some long notes. And you always get a mixture. Yeah, And that's called rhythm, okay, the rhythm of what we're reading. So you, you're reading rhythm and you're also as well reading pitch. Now pitch, as I mentioned earlier, is actually which note you need to find on the piano. Do you need to find a high note or do we need to find a low note? They're all different pitches. Let's first of all talk about rhythm. And again, this is a bit of a recap from our previous series of lessons. Uh, actually, if you want to, it's lesson five, I think we need to go back to when we're talking about uh, rhythms and also reading pitch. So, uh, rhythm then. So I've put down here, rhythm is how long we hold uh, uh, onto a note. And what we do, of course, is in music, we have different symbols, okay, to indicate what we call note lengths. So if we're just thinking about a normal musical heartbeat, if you like, so one, two, three, four, each one of these, ta, 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 we would say is a one beat. And the symbol for a one beat is that, okay? And the bit in brackets, ta, well, that's a syllable that I often tell my students to say when they're thinking about one beat notes. So these are one beat notes. Ta, 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 ta. So could you clap one beat notes with me? And it's really important that you say that syllable. So I would like you to do this, please. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, if you didn't join in then, now's your chance. Ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, so they are our one beat notes these ones here, okay, are one beat notes. So as well as one beats, we have longer notes, of course, we have two beat notes. And a two beat note looks like that. Notice how the, that little bit of the note is different, it's not colored in. And a two beat note would be counted like this, watch this, it's ta ah. okay? So could you join in with me clapping and counting Two beat notes. Don't forget to say the syllables like this: ta ah, ta ah, ta ah, ta ah, ta ah, ta ah. Yeah, I guess the nodding of the head is optional, but it tends to help. And then, of course, we have longer notes, and these longer notes. I'm going to show you uh, the next one that we're going to use today, which is a four beat note. Okay, here it is. Notice how it's just this well, sort of circle, not quite a circle, but it's nearly a circle. There's no stem. That's how you know it's a four beat note. Uh, sometimes I've known some of my colleagues call these four beat notes uh, grandfather notes because they kind of fall asleep when you're counting them. Watch. Ta, ah, ah, ah. Ta, ah, ah, ah. 
which uh, I think it's a bit unfair on grandparents. They're usually quite energetic, aren't they, these days? But OK, a four beat note. OK, uh, try this with me. Ready, steady, go. Ta, ah, ah, ah. Ta, ah, ah, ah. Good. OK, four beat note. Got it? Well, here's a little test for you. Well, not really a test, but let's try this. So on screen now, you can see four different boxes. And uh, just by an example, I'm going to clap this box here. OK, so as you can see, there are only one beat notes in here. So if I'm reading left to right, as we do, it would do this. Ta, 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 ta. OK, fairly straightforward. So three boxes remaining. I'm going to clap one of those rhythms. Tell me which one I've clapped. OK, you're going to hear it twice. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Ta, 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 ah. Here it is one more time. Ta, 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 ah. OK, so which one do you think? Well, it was actually the bottom left hand corner one here. OK. Now I'd like you to have a go. And what I'd like you to do, please, is to clap top right one, this box here. OK, we need to clap that, starting off with the two beat notes. OK, I'm going to count you in and then it's over to you. Are you ready? One, two, ready, go. OK, so I don't know if you got it right or wrong, but this is what it should be. OK, one, two, ready, go. Ta, ah, ta, ta. OK, hope you got that right. Now, as well as one beats, and two beats and four beats. We need all of those. Cast your mind back to uh, Jingle Bells. Now, if you remember the tune, it does this, doesn't it? It starts off, we do this. And we carry on. Oh, OK. So at the end there, we had um, some quite quick notes and what they were were sort of half beats. OK, they weren't a whole beat. They were less than a whole beat. So how do we show that in music? I'm going to go back to that screen in just a second. This is what we need to look at. OK, here is our one beat note. And sometimes it helps to think of a one beat note as a cake. OK, particularly I love cake. So that uh, image always works for me. And then what we've done over here is we've cut the cake into two halves. So here, if we're just clapping one beat notes, we would have ta, 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 ta. What we can do is cut those in two and we end up doing this. So we end up going tay, 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 like that. So this is what I want you to do next. We're going to do four one beat notes, ta, 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 ta. And then each of those beats, we're going to divide into two halves, into uh, half beats. OK, so they're going to go like this. Ta, 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 ta. Let's do that one more time. OK, can you clap along? Also, don't forget, say the syllables. OK, here we go. Ready? And ta, ta. Ta, 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 ta. Good. So we had ta and we have ta, ta. OK, we need those for jingle bells. Now, mentioning jingle bells, that previous screen that I, I skipped by, this one is the rhythm for jingle bells. OK, it's not complete music. There's bits missing, but that's the rhythm. If I play the beginning part of jingle bells, watch how this works. We're going to start from the beginning here and we're going to read across. When we get to the end of the line, you need to skip down and read across like this. Now that little red dot won't move because I need to be playing the piano and I can't be touching the computer screen at the same time. But um, let's start from the beginning here and just imagine that red dot bouncing over each note as we go. OK, here we go. One. Two, ready, go. Ta, ah, ta, 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 ah, ta, 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 ah, ah, ah. Okay, great. 
So, did you hear the grandfather note at the end, the four beat note? Okay, that's how it works, and that's rhythm. This is the second half of Jingle Bells. Let's just remind ourselves about Tar and Tay Tay because we need to look at those. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention the proper name, the musical name for one beat notes is a crotchet, and the proper name for the half beats are called quavers. Uh, in other countries like uh, America, for example, they have international name. But for the UK, you'll often ref find these notes referred to as crotchets and quavers. Here's the next bit of Jingle Bells. OK. And again, reading from uh, the top here, I'm going to play the next bit. And listen out for where we go. Ta, 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 te, te. OK. Going back to the beginning. Here we go. One. Two, ready, go. Ta 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 Okay, so that's how you read rhythm. But as I said, that's only half of the information that we need. We also need pitch. How do we write pitch? Well, we use a ladder, and a ladder with a funny symbol on it. Okay, so pitch. Which notes you play on the piano? Okay, so um, there's our funny ladder. There's our funny symbol. Okay, now uh, if you are with us for the first series, you'll know what that's called. Uh, it's called a G clef. Okay, the important bit there is G, because of course all the notes on the piano are numbered, numbered, <laughs> labeled with letters. Uh, they're labeled with letters and. Um, this symbol here basically is pointing to which line on the ladder refers to G. OK, and you notice it's actually a quite a cryptic sign. This what it's doing is it's trying to highlight this bit here, this line here. OK, now this line here is called the G line, and that means that any note that's placed on this line is G. There we go. That's what a G looks like. This one here. We'll talk about the note on the right hand side in just a second. But this one here is a G. And specifically, it actually refers to this G on the piano. OK, it's G above middle C. And I'm mentioning C, middle C, to be more uh, precise, middle C is this note here. So we've got G, and then we have, whoops, nearly C. OK, now if you can remember those two, they're the only two notes that are really important. Everything else on the ladder you can work out from those two, what I call signpost notes. Let me show you how this works. So let's just fill in uh, the ladder with some more notes. We're going to start off up here with G. And we're going to go G, next one down, F, next one down, E, next one down, D, next one down, middle C. OK, try that with me. OK, we're going to go back to G. OK, ready? Put your fifth finger on G and say G. Ready? G. Good. Next one, F. Next one, E. Next one, D. Next one, middle C. Great. OK. So here's a little test for you. Um, how would you play those four notes? Well, the important thing to remember is, again, this G clef here pointing to the G line. So any note on this line is going to be a G. We've got quite a few there. So we've got, first of all, what's that first one? Yeah, it's G. And then you can see this one here. Can you see how it's going down from G? We're going to go down to the next available sort of space, which is F. And then we go back up to G and G again. So let's try that. Ready? Starting on G. Ready, steady, play. And G, F, G. 
and G. Great. Okay. Here's another one then. Okay, now this one, the notes are not going step by step. They're going by what we call skip. So we start off here with the G. We miss out the note that's on that space. So we're not going to play the next door note here. We're actually going to play one down from there, which is E. And then we're going to go down again to middle C. And then back up to E again. So let's try that together. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. So G, E, C, E. Okay. And one more. Try this one then. Okay, so we're not going to start on G this time. But remember, I said there were two signpost notes. And this note here is the, the lower of the signpost notes. It's actually quite easy to remember because it's got its own little line. Okay, and that's, of course, middle C. All right, have a good look at that. Let's try it together. Ready? Okay, after four counts. Ready? One, two, three, go. It's C, then D, then E, and then G. Okay, so how did you get on so far? Is it all sort of fairly um, fairly easy to, to follow? If you need a bit more help, don't worry, because sometimes these things do take a while uh, to, to work on. And the great thing about these videos, of course, is once they've finished the live broadcast bit, you can always then go back to them whenever you like, as many times as you like. Rewind, play a bit again, uh, pause it, play it again. Um, so it's not just one of those things that... Uh, we do uh, live. Of course, you can replay as many times as you want. So lastly, we're going to put it all together. And now on the screen, you can see something that looks a little bit like music. Of course, there's two things going on. And the first thing, of course, is that we've got um, our rhythm. Remember how we were doing this? Look, reading from left to right, you can see ta, 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 ah, ta, 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 ah. Ta, 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 ah, ah, ah. Okay, so that's fairly okay. And we've also got, of course, a G clef here. We've got the five line ladder. Um, also, a couple of, well, actually, three things I can see there to explain to you. Firstly, the two numbers, the four and the four. Now, that's called a time signature. And what that means is the number of beats in every bar. What's a bar? Well, actually, good question. A bar, I haven't explained it so far, but to make music easier to read, what we do is we split up the lines here. We split up uh, all the music into boxes, and each box has to have an equal number of beats. That doesn't mean an equal number of notes. It's an equal number of beats. So, for example, this first bar here, let me just change that into a pen so I can show you this first bar here well we've got four beats all together we've got uh, two one beat notes ta ta and we've also here got our two beat note so that would be ta ah and if you put that all together of course you end up with ta 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 ah that's how that works let's choose another bar well I suppose this one here at the end, the grandfather note, the four beat note, of course, that's one note, but it lasts for four beats. Ta, ah, ah, ah. So you can see how the rhythm and the pitch are coming together um, into a, a piece of music. Lastly, you can see up here, I've got some little numbers. There's one here, and there's one here, a four, okay? That number there, the three, means that I'm going to start to play with finger three. And this number here means I'm going to start to play with finger four. And by the way, the number here that's chopped off, that's actually, uh, actually a five. That refers to the bar number. So if I say, let's begin from bar number five, you can see the label there. It's clear. We can start from there very quickly. We don't have to keep counting the bars from the beginning. 
So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to play you these uh, two musical lines and we're going to just try and play them together and I'm going to leave you with a bit of homework until next time which is to have a go and practice reading what you see there and playing along. So I'm going to play it for you first and for the second time through I'm going to actually tell you what the finger numbers are to play so if you'd like to play it that way you can. Okay so from the beginning it's going to sound like this. One, two, ready. Okay, all right, let's try that again. Uh, and this time, finger numbers. One, two, ready, go. Three, three, three. Three, three, three. Three, three five. One, two, three. Four, 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 three, 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 three. Three, two, two, three. Two, five. OK, well, of course, you can rewind that and play it back. But that's the beginning of Jingle Bells for the right hand. And if you found that fairly OK, well, then there's something else that you can look at for me for next time as well. We do have the second half <laughs> and uh, there isn't time to go through it now. But what I will say is it's not all new music. If you have a look at that now, you can see that there's a lot of music there that uh, is a repeat, pretty much. It's really just the last couple of bars there, isn't it, that's different that you've got to work around. So, have a good go at that. Of course, um, what I'm going to do is, at the very end of this video, just leave page one and then page two. Um, so you can pause it, if you like, at that particular page. And you know um, where they are in the video. Good luck, and I'll see you in lesson two.